What's up YouTube, M Kwan here. Peace and blessings to all out there. Um, uploading this video from Abu Dhabi and um, this is a video kind of uh, a long time in the making. I've been asked about this video time and time again uh, from many of you guys, um, particularly those of you that are thinking about moving to Abu Dhabi. Now, chances are you've probably been offered a job contract. You know that you've got to move to Abu Dhabi um, and you want to know what the deal is with uh, accommodation and with rent in particular. Now, what I'm going to try and do in this video is just give you a summary and kind of a, a brief outline on the rental situation here in the in the Emirate. Um, it does vary from place to place, but uh, generally, broadly speaking, uh, as far as Abu Dhabi is concerned, anyway, it's kind of. Uh, the way I'm gonna sort of uh, tell you about. Abu Dhabi is an emirate, it's a capital city of the United Arab Emirates and it's really where majority of the kind of uh, government related jobs tend to be placed. So for that reason the rents in this part of the country are very very expensive. Now I'll talk about specifics generally um, but um, you've got to understand a couple of things. First of all, uh, it's one of the most expensive cities anywhere in the world. Now, the second thing is that rent here is usually paid uh, in a lump sum at the beginning of your rental contract. So it means that at the beginning, before they hand over the keys, you've got to pay uh, the entire rent upfront for a year. Now, in majority of cases, most people will get what they call uh, two or three check payments. Now, essentially, uh, rent is paid either by check or by cash, but most people don't have that kind of cash to hand. So what they'll do is, is that they will give uh, a number of checks and you basically divide that up in the year. So if, you, if you're giving two checks, it will be one check after six months. But what is important to remember is majority of the cases you'll have to pay or you'll have to give those checks uh, up front. So you have to sign them. Now, remember that in this part of the world, by law, uh, if you don't uh, fulfill that check or if you don't uh, have enough funds to fulfill that check, strictly speaking, it's actually a criminal offense. So the person for whom that check bounces uh, can actually take you to court. So be aware of that. The way the rent is arranged here is very different from anywhere else. Usually what happens is you will have um, uh, an agency or a, a, an estate agent that you will make contact with that will try and get you an accommodation. Uh, you give them the specifics, I want a one bedroom, I want a two bedroom, I want a three bedroom, I want a townhouse, I want a villa, I want an apartment, and then they will go out and find it for you. Here in the UAE, uh, what is slightly different from the rest of the world, I know this from the UK because I've had experience with property there, but here in the UAE what happens is you pay the landlord for the rent, but you also have to pay the rental company for a particular percentage of uh, uh, what they call an agency fee. And that can go from anywhere from between two and a half percent to a, a, a maximum, I've seen this, of seven and a half percent. For some agents and some uh, rental companies, it can actually be higher, almost 10 percent. But generally speaking, it's between two and a half to seven and a half percent. Um, and, and what that means is that you've got to bear that in mind. You've got to bear in mind that you've got to pay the rental income to the landlord and you've got to also pay the agency fee. Uh, otherwise, essentially, you're not going to get that property that you know uh, you've looked at. The final thing to remember here is rent prices as a norm go up year by year. So it means that if you're renting a place for let's say, hypothetically speaking, 100,000 dirhams, um, guaranteed the rent in the second year is not gonna be 100,000. Very, very seldom do landlords keep the rent at the stage that they are at, unless it's a downturn or you know, uh, they're, they're something economically wise isn't right. Um, the likelihood is that you'll be paying more in the second year than you will be in the first year. Uh, most people will say that their rent will go up by about five to 15%. I've heard of people's rents going up by 25 to 30%. Um, particularly in areas where, for example, there's been a new mall that's opened or there's a new development that's taking place, that can happen. So do, again, be aware of that uh, uh, as well. Uh, finally, the, the last point is to do with, um, uh, you've got to bear in mind that when you are renting a place out, there are a couple of costs that go in at the beginning. The agency fee, 
uh, the, the, the rent that you have to give itself, you also have to give a deposit. And in most cases, the deposit is about between 5,000 dirhams uh, for a, uh, let's say, 100,000 dirham property, or it can be slightly more. It can be based off a percentage of the total amount. And that's something that, again, theoretically speaking, you should get that back at the end of your contract. But in some cases, that isn't the case. Uh, landlords can charge you for really small, minute things and, and, and charge you more than what they should be doing. But do bear that in mind. Make sure that you do, uh, if, you're, if you find a landlord, make sure that you do get references for the landlord uh, as well to make sure that they do pay the deposit back. So that's it in a summary. Now, what should you expect to pay? Well, there are certain key areas. Now, Abu Dhabi is a vast city um, and it's a vast emirate really. And there are really a, a number of different locations. Now, what I'm gonna focus on is the locations that predominantly Western expats stay in. And I'm doing that because majority of my viewership and majority of the questions that I get asked are from Western expats. So broadly speaking, there are a number of areas. The first area that I'm gonna talk about is the area that I live in. It's called Al Reem Island. It's a relatively new island. It's close to the city, um, but majority of the accommodation, in fact, I'd say 95% of the accommodation here are made up of apartment blocks. So you're talking about you know, high rise buildings. You've got to bear that in mind if you, you know, are thinking of open spaces, so on and so forth. There are some good resources there. There, there are a lot of the buildings will have swimming pools, will have some kind of kids playground ish area. Uh, bear in mind, most of the day it's unusable because it's just far too hot. Um, but it, it, it is, you know, useful to know and it's a useful asset to have, especially in the evenings if you want to take kids out. Now, rent for a one bedroom apartment usually here will be at the current state at the moment, around about 100,000 dirhams. Now, there are certain key buildings on Alreem Island, for example, Sun and Sky Tower, where a one bedroom will set you back around about 110,000 dirhams, which is quite pricey. Uh, a two bedroom apartment uh, will set you back around about 130,000 uh, to about 140,000 dirhams a year. Now, that's Alreem Island. The other areas to think Think about are um, in the city itself and what I would say is a lot of expats end up staying in Itihad towers or in um, you know Khalidiyah area there are kind of new build buildings there that you can check out the prices for one bedrooms there are a little cheaper they can be from about 90,000 to about a hundred and thirty thousand I say hundred and thirty thousand because if you're gonna be in somewhere like the Itihad tower or the uh, the, the, the World Trade Center tower that's gonna cost you around about a one 20 uh, for a one bedroom. Um, some of the newer bills within the city itself, excluding those particular towers, are going to be around about 85 to 90. Now, what are the perks of those areas? Well, they're in the city. It means that you've got really easy access, almost walking access to um, shopping centers, to, to you know, local shops, things like that. What it does mean, the downside is, is that it's gonna be close to impossible getting parking. And if you are gonna get parking, the likelihood is you'll have to pay additional, probably 10 to 20,000 dirhams a year for private parking. Um, it also means that some of these buildings don't have the resources that others do. Some of them don't have gyms. They definitely don't have swimming pools. So it m may mean that you'll have to pay extra uh, to go and gain those uh, amenabilities. The next area I want to talk about is Khalifa City. Now, Khalifa City is interesting because it's kind of made up of a few areas. Uh, you've got uh, kind of a Raha Gardens uh, in the vicinity, the top end area. Uh, Al Raha Gardens, um, you've got kind of like almost high rise, but not high, high rise building areas. Those are apartment blocks. Uh, there are a lot of villas that are available. Now the villas that are available are divided up into usually multiple uh, layers. So you'll have the first floor being taken up by a family, second floor being taken up by a family. Majority of those villas are legal. Some of those villas are not legal and you have to be very careful. There's something called 
a tawthiq, and this applies to actually all of the apartments that I mentioned. One of the things that you must make sure when you finalize a contract is that you can get a tawthiq. Now, a landlord might tell you to go somewhere else to get a tawthiq, but broadly speaking, it, you should be able to get that. If the landlord says there is no tawthiq available, then that's an alarm bell sound because you're going to need the tawthiq for uh, your visa. If you're bringing over your family, your family's visa, you're going to need that for your Emirates ID, a whole range of other stuff. So be aware of that. Um, now, as I was saying, Khalifa City is made up of villas. It's also made up of these areas. Al Bandar, Al Munira, Al Raha, uh, those are really very, very high end. Um, kind of residential areas again apartments but they have beautiful access to the sea um, they have um, access to a whole range of kind of I'd say higher end cafes and shops and things like that but they do come with a price tag and a one bedroom currently at the moment that I've scoped out and checked out there is gonna set you back round about 120,000 a two bedroom and a lot of the two bedrooms there will have maids room will set you back around 150 to 160,000 and I've seen some going up all the way to 180,000 so again quite an expensive area to be now on the other end the villa side the villas are they really vary um, you can get a villa with about two bedroom uh, three bedroom for about 120 130,000 downside of the villas in Khalifa is, uh, is really down to the fact that they don't have any amenities nearby a lot of these villas won't have you know gym access they won't have sort of pool access so it means that you've got to again factor in the cost uh, related to that right so that's uh, Khalifa city that's a Reem island that's kind of downtown stroke Corniche area the next area that I want to talk to you about is going further out uh, Al Reef uh, is a kind of residential complex it's a closed community complex um, and it's out in the desert and I say that in the nicest way possible out in the desert but it does have some amenities the first one is that you've got a new mall called Yas Mall that has opened up very close to it uh, probably five ten minutes you've got Yas Island which means that you've got access to Ferrari World there's all those uh, amenities the other thing is that you do have access to the airport nearby it's literally around the corner from the airport and that can be very very useful uh, if you are continuously flying in and out also rents generally speaking are much more affordable there one bedroom apartment there uh, will cost you around about 80,000 a two bedroom will cost you about 90 to 100,000 hey my friend can you give me full tank of uh, super, super cool. yeah full tank yeah petrol uh, pump stop right so a two bedroom is gonna cost you around about what am I saying yeah around about 90 to 100 thousand um, and those are the apartments they do have townhouses there townhouses obviously are gonna be starting from two to three bedroom around about 140 to 160 thousand again it kind of varies and you'll have to check it out uh, what are the advantages of it, uh, living on a reef the ones that I've mentioned what are the disadvantages it's far from downtown uh, Abu Dhabi so you kind of like you're torn between shall I drive to Dubai shall I drive to Abu Dhabi it's not to be honest it's, it's closer to Abu Dhabi than it is to Dubai but still you know if you want to go to a, a fancy mall it's probably easy to go to Ibn Battuta mall or somewhere on the outskirts of Dubai and and I suppose in some ways that's an advantage as well um, the last point, the last area that I want to talk about, which is coming up more and more on a lot of expats uh, uh, um, sort of radars, is an area called Gadir. Now, Gadir is literally on the borderline between Abu Dhabi and Dubai, and it serves a purpose because by law, if you work in Abu Dhabi, you are required uh, in order to get the housing allowance to live within the vicinity of Abu Dhabi. Now there are a lot of people that have kids in schools elsewhere in Dubai so that fits for them perfectly well because it means that you know it, it, they pay the least amount to be in Abu Dhabi and get their housing allowance but it gives them the ability to get into the car and 10-15 minute sort of fast drive to get within Dubai or Dubai's vicinity. Um, now housing over there, there aren't really apartments, there are mostly townhouses. Townhouses vary between about 80 to 90,000 for a two bedroom uh, townhouse to about 100, 110,000 for a three bedroom townhouse. Um, advantages are that I guess you're very close to Dubai. Um, 
it's townhouse kind of environment so it means that you know you can have that open space uh, disadvantages are that you're in between nowhere basically you're in between Dubai you're in between kind of Abu Dhabi you've got nothing really nearby um, and it, in my opinion it's quite expensive for that for that feature okay guys I hope that's helped in some way uh, to give you a rough idea remember prices vary um, the best recommendation that I have is to go and check it out on Dubizzle. Dubizzle is awesome to go and find out more information and specific information. Um, be careful about the agencies that you approach. Thank you so much my friend. Be careful about the agencies that you approach because a lot of the agencies um, you know are they've got to make money in between so make sure that you get good references for those particular agencies uh, I would recommend nationwide there is actually somebody that I know there on nationwide um, if you if you want their details then do connect with me on Twitter or on Instagram and I'd be happy to share their uh, contact details through that but be careful when you are uh, getting a place bear in mind it's a massive massive amount of money uh, I've just renewed my contract I've paid uh, for one year 95,000 um, some people will say why aren't you in a bigger place well for us really uh, what matters most and the reason we've decided to stick with El Reem is it's a beautiful area it's close to the city but it's not in you know the heart of the city um, parking is provided we get a gym we get five seven pools access that we can gain uh, it means that if I'm not around Miss B Bila doesn't need a car to get to the nearest shop she doesn't need um, you know to to drive to get uh, you know milk or bread or whatever is needed in an emergency uh, it's doable there's access for Zane to play around on the grass to go into the kiddies pool all that kind of stuff yes we do compromise on the apartment space and size but god we've got a hell of a view so yeah right guys I hope you enjoy this video um, do share it with somebody else if, if you feel that it's useful for them that's it for me for now hope you've enjoyed this video hope it's useful and do check out some of the other content we have on MQAN TV that's me over and out peace and blessings